Hi, I'm Ben Goff from the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and I'm here with somebody who was here right from the beginning of mountain biking in Northwest Arkansas, Ranger Tim Scott, here at Devil's Den State Park. Tell us about uh, what we're doing here this weekend. Well, Ben, uh, this weekend is the 31st annual Ozark Mountain Bike Festival. And actually, it's been since the beginning, this is our actually 30th year. First one was in 1989. And obviously it's uh, 2019, so 30 years ago is when we had the first festival here and it's been every year since then. So now when were, when were the trails first built here? This is one of the first areas in the state, right? Yes, actually we had a race in April of 1989. It was actually a combination race festival. On Saturday we had a festival with guided rides and some fun events. And then on Sunday we had a race. And the race was actually up in the National Forest, and we basically used old Forest Service roads, and it was, a give or take, about a four-mile loop. And that was probably the first race in the state. Huh. And then from there, we split it. Four miles doesn't seem like a lot by modern standards for a mountain bike race. No, but what we did, it was more like, almost like a criterion. They did okay. laps. Yeah, and I've seen some places they do like a short track format, kind of like that now, yeah. It, it's very yeah. similar. And so the uh, uh, experts probably did at that point, did probably about four laps, and then, you know, on down less than on what your uh, level was. And I think for that first race, we probably had, which was pretty phenomenal, about 150 racers. Wow. And then we split it up. That was, I mean, that was in the early days of mountain biking. That was the in bikes, the... If you looked at a bike from then, it probably wouldn't be what most people would consider a mountain bike today. Or, well, I mean, what kind of stuff were you riding back then? No, and, and I'm trying to think. I don't think that probably anybody, at least in the first, maybe first couple of races, had suspension at all. Yeah. Everything was rigid. And the trails was a lot, were a lot different, too, in that they're not as groomed like they are today. It was rough and rugged that by today's standards would be hard pedaling with the full suspension bike. But then, being completely rigid, it was yeah. really tough to handle. So this, was, they were mostly trails there that pre-existed? They were yes. hiking trails? Well, they were, a lot of them were just old forest service road trails that went into homesteads okay. and probably were first used in the late 1800s. Was it tough to get that uh, ball rolling and get approval and, you know, to open the trails to mountain bikes? Well, Kind of yes and no. Uh, the next year, we ended up having it all in the park. We moved the, for our, actually we had a race in April, then a race in September. And the race that September was more what we would call today like a gravel grinder. Yeah. And then, so there was really kind of two races in 89, and then we decided to split it up, to have the festival in the spring, and then just do the race in the fall. Yeah. And by the next race in 1990, we were racing in the park. And that was one of the reasons in 1988, we went out to Crescent Butte to see what they were doing because a lot of public lands were banning mountain bikes. But we saw this as an opportunity. It's kind of like the next trail user. It looked like it was going to be a, not just necessarily a trend, it was getting ready to happen, so we thought we should be, probably be proactive on this. Well, if you've never been at Devil's Dead, you can expect a little bit of everything. There's some really old school stuff out there, uh, and then there's some smooth and green trails. You'll get a little double track, but most of it's single track, so it's pretty fast. There's some really good climbs on it and some rewarding downhill. Yeah. Creek crossing, so... Yeah. Well, we're, we're doing this after 
our ride this time, which is a little different than some of these videos we've been doing. And uh, we're definitely a little bit wet. I don't know if that's obvious. Um, so that's something I guess you got to plan for, especially certain times of the year when it's cold. You don't want to be uh, putting together a ride, I guess, where you're going to have to get in the cold water. Exactly. Well, and I tell you what, it always seems like, no matter which festival it is, spring or fall, it's going to rain sometime before. Yeah. Because it's always wet. At once. Yeah. There's definitely, I definitely, uh, our bikes uh, are splattered with mud, but it seems like these trails held up. It seems like you can get, you know, going right. I mean, you're not going to tear the trails too bad if it's rained recently. Well, uh, a lot of these trails were built by professionals, but we also get a lot of uh, help from ORC for rerouting, and, and those guys are experts at trail building. So they build them sustainable, so they really build them. Well, it'll be a whole variety of things. We will have uh, guided rides. We have a bunch of features like rollers and some obstacles for the kids. There will also be a uh, bike in WA. We'll have some Strider bikes out so some kids can use those. Uh, we'll also have some other fun events depending on what's going on. We may have a bike toss. Bike toss. Bike toss. Where okay. do you act? Like uh, Highland Games paper toss? What are we It'd be about, about the same thing, okay. except you're throwing a bike. Oh, all right. Uh, I don't know if I can afford to throw my bike around. But well, we'll have one that you can oh, use. Oh, okay. So that's just take out your frustration when, you know, all those times your bikes cost you money and you have to take it to the shop and you just, like, little let out some of that frustration. This will give you a chance to throw yeah. it so you can throw it the furthest. Okay. And then, I've never heard of that, but that sounds like fun. Bike toss is always fun. And then we'll have a limbo set up. So okay. you can bike limbo. On the bike. On the, on the bike, bike okay. and, and bike bunny hop, just okay. kind of the opposite. Yeah. And then kind of, we'll also have a big feed on Saturday night. We'll have some uh, hamburgers. We'll make, we have a five gallon ice cream mixer. So we'll yeah. make some homemade ice cream. Well, Saturday's going to be pretty busy here too. Still got Joe Martin Stage Race. So Martin Stage Race will be here too. So it's going to be a lot of bikes running around. Yeah. But I tell you, probably the big event will be the big splash. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cross yeah. Lee Creek and whoever makes the biggest splash wins the prize. So that's judged on uh, judges on the side of the creek. Judges on the side to, of the creek. Style, do, you, do you get disqualified if you don't make it across, or is it strictly on on style points? Well, you know the rules change. Oh. So it, be, it may change in the middle of it. Okay. <laughs> Typically it's style points. Yeah. yeah, I guess there's some style on actually achieving, you know, being able to get across the creek. Exactly. Because we just tried that and it's not easy. No, I it's not easy. It. Those rocks are slick. Um, Pedal boat races, yeah. that'll be kind of capped at the end of the day before we go eat. Park's been real lucky that we get support from the community, a lot of bike shops and businesses help us out for, for both events. Uh, especially OORC, they're always pitching in and, and giving us a hand. And, and also Arkansas State Parks, you know, back in 1986 when mountain bikes started coming to Devil's Den, our department got behind it and sent me and um, my supervisor at the time, Wally Sherry, out to Crested Butte to check and see what a mountain bike event was like and try to bring back the information we learned there to bring it to Arkansas State Parks. So now that mountain biking has really taken off in Northwest Arkansas, I mean, it, I heard a statistic recently they're building some two miles a week or something to, up to that effect. I All can these different it. new places. What keeps people coming back here? Well, a, a couple of things. You know, it's one of the first mountain bike trails in the state. So everybody likes to come ride it. And then, you know, if you come to Devil's Den, you got a little bit of everything to do. You can ride your mountain bike, you can come hike, you can also camp while you do that. 
And the other thing is if you ride here, we're an excellent kind of base camp. You can camp here and go up to Springdale, ride a fish trail, or up to Tesla and ride, up to Bentonville and ride the great trails up there. So you can kind of use Devil's Den as a place to get around up to Hobbs. So, uh, and down to Lake Fort Smith, we're just kind of centrally located and it's not more than a 45 minute ride to any trail besides that you ride here. Yeah. When you ride here, you really get also a really good wilderness experience. You know, you get out there, you don't hear any cars, traffic. So you get out and you're probably not gonna run into that many other riders. So you can really get out here and have a great ride and enjoy nature also. Well, thanks again to Ranger Tim Scott here at Devil's Den State Park for coming out and uh, taking us on a ride on these uh, historic trails. Uh, where everything got started on, uh, you know, fat tires first started rolling through the woods in the Ozarks. Um, a lot of fun stuff going on this weekend. Uh, maybe we'll see you out here. That's a little bit of a hill. It's a hill. <laughs> it is short and torturous. There goes our own wild man flip. Oh. <laughs> 